During the 1960s, the U.S. Army was in desperate need of a new advanced aerial fire support system, as their experience in Vietnam had shown them that the odd assortment of field-modified helicopters they'd been using as support aircraft were not up to the task. Thus, the Army issued a request for proposal in August of 1964, and a total of 148 companies and organizations participated in the competition. The winner would earn a contract to develop, build, and supply the U.S. Army with the new aircraft. Out of all the proposed designs, the most interesting one by far was the Convair Model 49. In an ambitious and groundbreaking move, Convair presented the outline of something never seen before. In contrast to all its competitors, Model 49 wasn't a helicopter, nor was it a plane. It was something entirely new, a heavily armed, shrouded rotor aircraft. The futuristic airship sought to keep the speed and agility of an aircraft while adding the versatility and hovering capabilities of a helicopter. Model 49 it was the ultimate support vehicle, at least on paper, and it was years ahead of its time. It undoubtedly blew everyone away, but developing it would not be an easy endeavor. The need for an AFSS. In the early 1960s, the U.S. Army deployed its newest and most capable heavy lift helicopter to date, the Boeing CH-47 Chinook. The Chinook's powerful twin engine and tandem rotor configuration allowed the cargo helicopter unprecedented agility while reaching speeds of up to 200 miles per hour. However, the remarkable capabilities of the Chinook soon became an issue, as the aircraft was not only much faster than the helicopter it was replacing, but it was also much faster than the helicopters that were supposed to escort it and provide it with fire support. Having a state-of-the-art heavy-lift helicopter with unmatched speed was useless if it couldn't be used for lack of capable support units. Hence, the U.S. Army prioritized developing a new generation of Advanced Aerial Fire Support System, or AAFSS, that could keep up with the remarkable Boeing CH-47 Chinook. On August 1st, 1964, the Army released a request for proposal calling for the design of an all-weather close-air support aircraft. The aircraft was required to achieve speeds of at least 253 miles per hour, to hover at 6,000 feet of altitude on a 95-degree Fahrenheit day, and to have a ferry range of 2,415 miles, which was enough to reach Hawaii from California. With such features, the support aircraft would be able to escort the new Boeing CH-47 Chinooks until they reached their landing zone, then fly ahead and soften the area with heavy firepower. After that, the support aircraft would hover in the area, providing close air support, while the troops descended from the heavy lift helicopter and assumed their positions. The standard armament for the AAFSS was a 40mm grenade launcher, a 30mm cannon, and six Shillelagh anti-tank missiles. As icing on the cake, the new support aircraft would also include a state-of-the-art all-weather fire control system for nighttime operations, equipment that had never before been fitted into a helicopter. The deadline to submit a design for the new AAFSS was set for November 23, 1964. A groundbreaking proposal. Out of the 148 contesting corporations, it was Convair that prevailed. The previously independent and modest aircraft manufacturer had recently been acquired by General Dynamics and submitted the most intriguing proposal. Even if the Army didn't specify it when they requested an AAFSS, Convair naturally thought of a support helicopter. All the submitted designs were outlines for new helicopter aircraft, capable of achieving the Army's specific requirements, but Convair's design was different. Instead of developing a safe but functional proposal, Convair decided to submit a highly risky and innovative design. Model 49 did not fit the mold for either an airplane or a helicopter. Instead, it represented a shrouded rotor support aircraft. Model 49 was the result of Convair's extensive research on alternative propulsion configurations, specifically from investigations regarding the advantages provided by propulsion systems located at the center of a vehicle instead of peripheral locations. The innovative design was also an attempt to prove the advantage of a shaft-coupled transmission configuration over the more traditional gas-coupled one. This daring propulsion system consisted of three shroud-mounted 3,000-shaft horsepower Lycoming LTC-4B11 turboshaft engines coupled through shafting, clutches, and gear reduction units to contra-rotating Hamilton standard variable pitch propellers located inside the shroud. 
Such configuration resulted in the thrust and lift system being highly interconnected, as the shroud amplified the thrust and effectively counteracted the small diameter of the rotors. The aircraft's body was designed around the main shroud, which encased the rotors and propulsion system. The shroud showcased four protruding nacelles, three of them housed the engines, and the fourth one the weapon systems. On top of the shroud sat a collapsible capsule that held the cockpit and aircraft noise. This unit could partially rotate to achieve a vertical or horizontal position, depending on if the aircraft was traversing or hovering, respectively. In addition, the shroud, engines, and crew capsule were fitted with steel armor capable of deflecting up to 12.7mm enemy rounds, which protected the aircraft from almost every light source of firepower, but left it significantly vulnerable to rockets, missiles, and high-caliber projectiles. Armament The Model 49 base prototype was designed to utilize three turrets fitted into the front of the vehicle. The most prominent turret was to be placed in the center, flanked by two smaller turrets. A broad array of specific weapons was proposed for the turrets. The basic outline considered the inclusion of either XM-134 7.62mm machine guns or XM-75 40mm grenade launchers in the side turrets, while the main turret would be equipped with an XM-140 30mm cannon. Each of the three turrets was articulated and capable of rotating to fire in a horizontal or vertical position. Hence, the aircraft could provide adequate fire support when traversing at high speeds or when hovering over an area. While flying at high speed, the turrets had limited elevation and rotation capabilities. However, when firing at low speeds, the turrets had a more comprehensive range of motion, only limited by mechanical stops that prevented the turrets from accidentally hitting the crew compartment. In addition to the three turrets, Model 49 was intended to be able to carry additional firepower. There were four hardpoints located on the two flanking engine nacelles. These hardpoints could be fitted with external fuel tanks, BGM-71 tow missiles, Shalali missiles, or an M40A1C 106mm recoilless cannon. The addition of an M40A1C 106mm rifle provided an excellent solution against armored targets on the battlefield and had an effective range of up to 10,000 yards. All of these additional hardpoints were designed to rotate according to the current disposition of the aircraft, meaning that they could be deployed while flying horizontally or while hovering vertically. Model 49 in the balance. Model 49 was a highly ambitious and innovative design. According to Convair's projections, the aircraft was able to achieve vertical takeoff, landing, and hovering as efficiently as a helicopter. Additionally, Convair was confident that the propulsion system was intrinsically more reliable than that of a conventional helicopter, while also being much easier to operate than a support helicopter at the time. Furthermore, after their experience with the experimental Navy XFY-1 Pogo, Convair was confident in their vertical control systems and power plant installations. They concluded that the development of the Model 49 would be straightforward despite its unusual design. The Army, however, was not so confident. After a positive first impression, mainly due to the innovative nature of the design, the Army officials in charge of the AAFSS contest decided that the proposal was too radical for its time. The specific issues noted in the project's rejection cited reservations regarding the maintenance of a center-body-mounted engine. The Army concluded that despite the potential advantages of a centered propulsion system, accessing it in the field for regular maintenance would be too difficult and costly. Army officials also mentioned concerns about the development of an aircraft so different from what was being manufactured at the time. In the end, the Army disregarded the Model 49 proposal and instead chose the much more conventional Sikorsky S-66 and Lockheed CL-840 helicopters as potential solutions to its AAFSS program. Ultimately, neither of those helicopters would be deemed appropriate enough to solve the U.S. military's support issues. Thus, the Lockheed AH-56 Cheyenne design was eventually chosen to be the AAFSS aircraft for a new generation of warfare, but with budget constraints and mounting pressures to get out of Vietnam, its development was cancelled. It would be the eventual development and deployment of the remarkable AH-64 Apache that would finally fulfill all the needs that the U.S. Army presented. Imagining how the Model 49 would have performed in a real-life combat scenario is a fascinating perspective. However, Convair's bold design never made it to the prototype phase, and the company only developed several scale models that showcased the design and rotation functionality of the airship. 
Still, the Model 49 remains one of the riskiest, most innovative, and groundbreaking designs ever submitted to the Army by a private manufacturer. Thank you for watching our Dark Skies video. Do you think the Model 49 could have performed well on the Vietnam battlefield? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. And for more exciting history-inspired stories, don't forget to subscribe to all of our Dark Documentaries channels and hit the bell icon to be notified of our latest content. Stay tuned.